Hi and welcome back for another Cottage Cuts YouTube video tutorial. This is Marla with Mad About Cards and Crafts and today I have a beautiful floral bouquet featuring some of the products that are available now in the Scrap and Cottage. I'm starting with some watercoloring on some spring tulips. I'll be giving these tulips away later in the video. I also have the Christmas Farmhouse Floral. I'll be using the Milk Jug. I'm using my Corinne Brush Marker Pros. This is a dye-based ink and I find that they work best for me using Fabriano Artistico watercolor paper. This uh, ink is very vibrant and intense and for me I get better movement and less saturation into the paper. I found that some of the papers that I used previously with these brush markers was um, the ink was just soaking into it and it wasn't moving and so it kind of sits a little bit more on top a little bit longer. I did put a timestamp on this so if you didn't want to see the watercoloring process you can skip to six minutes 30 seconds and that will take you to the rest of the process for this card. I'm going to show you two different techniques using these markers. The first one here is going direct to paper. I have a hot pink and an orange and you saw that I added three, two or three lines to the left hand side uh, at the very top of those. That is to kind of add a little bit of petals trying to make some definition in the petals for the tulips separating those a little bit. Uh, I only add that intense color in those areas once, but the rest of the ink that I've added is to add shading. So I start where I want my shadows to be. I add the ink direct to paper. Um, these brushes that I used, they hold a lot of water and you don't want to really saturate your paper. So I do have a microfiber cloth over on the side and I'm just tapping it down trying to remove some of that excess water so that I'm not uh, soaking that paper. Then I take the brush and I kind of pull out the water from those darker areas where I've added the marker direct to the paper. In just a moment, I'm going to switch the technique and I am going to add the ink to my glass mat because I do have this high intensity. As you can see right here, um, when I want to add just lighter touches of another color, I'll add it directly to my glass mat and I'll pick it up from there. For this flower, I added some oranges and some hot pinks, and then I wanted to get a little bit of that yellow in there for um, the yellow, orange, and pink tulip. I'll take a peachy color and I'm gonna go all around the edges once I finish with the uh, water coloring, once I get the intensity of color that I'm looking for. And that will just finish off those edges so that uh, when you look at my tulips from the side, you're not going to see the white cardstock or watercolor cardstock underneath. So here's where I'm adding a little bit more pink. Instead of making, instead of uh, adding it directly to the paper, I want to make sure that I'm being much lighter with it. And so when you bring it in, using it from your glass mat, it's going to give you a much softer finish. You're going to see in tulip number two, I'm going to use that technique for the flower. So I'll start with. I'm adding just a little bit of orange direct to paper and I'm going to be very light handed with that orange and then I'll blend it out and then I'll start adding the ink coming off of my glass mat. In my last video, I did share a card. I think I used, it was the spring bird with vine and I am giving, I did uh, offer to give that away and the winner of that is Jewel. So Jewel, I will have Mary Marsh's information linked in the description box below. All you need to do is send her an email, let her know that you are the winner from my video. She will make sure that uh, the Scrap and Cottage sends you your die. So congratulations to you. So there's that coat and you can see that I do dry in between layers. You want to do that um, any time that you're doing water coloring because allowing each of the layers to dry is going to allow you to just add more on top as opposed to uh, blending the colors together. So here I added that pink to my mat and then I'm using my brush which has been dipped in water 
to um, add that to the tulip. I want to lighten that color so I clean off my brush making sure that that ink is off my brush and then I use it to pull that ink towards the center. Uh, I'm also leaving white space so I'm making sure that the outer edges are darker than the center of those petals. That gives me kind of a highlight and you can see right there the difference in the two colors. So we're gonna move on to the leaf. I'm just going to color one for you. I started with a lighter green and I'm gonna blend that out with some water. And then I want to add a little bit more intensity and I'll come in with a darker green. Now, when I start adding that darker green, I did have a little bit more water on my brush than I intended to and I washed out some of that lighter green. So I'll add that to finish off uh, add that to add that lighter green back in and then I'll add another layer of the darker green and you're going to see that I have nice movement on those petals or on those leaves by adding that extra um, couple coats of color. So here's where I'm going to add that lighter green. Now I didn't dry between layers this time and usually I do so I just went directly between the two colors adding them back and forth. I prefer, there I'm drying it right there, I prefer to dry in between colors but somehow it worked. All right moving on I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white uh, accent opaque cardstock. I'm going to do a little bit of ink blending starting with speckled egg. I thought the speckled egg was going to go nicely with my milk can. I'll add my shabby shutters to the center and I thought that that was going to complement the leaves. And finally I added saltwater taffy. I'm going to add a little bit more of that blue making sure that I get that blend. But finally I'll add that saltwater taffy and that will uh, kind of help bring together the oranges and the pinks that are in my tulip. So all three colors I think blend together nicely. I think that they complement the floral bouquet that I'm creating and they're nice soft colors. So I'm not being perfect with my ink blend. I could blend this just a little bit better, but I do know that I'm going to be stamping with water. I did mention that the, there are going to be a few water techniques in this, so I did start with water coloring, and now we are going to stamp using water. Because distress inks are water reactive, I am going to be able to get a very soft, beautiful background with this stamp, so I'm spritzing it with a little bit of water, uh, making sure that I get a really nice impression. I'll dry my panel to see just um, how intense that stamping is. So I really want that stamping to stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna wipe my stamp off because there is ink that I did lift off. And now I'm going to spritz it one more time. And this is going to give me the additional lift of color that I was looking for. So instead of adding a uh, heat embossed background in white, I decided that I wanted to lift up that color. And you're going to see when I show you the close up of the card that you really can see that beautiful softness that adding that water brings. Moving on to our container, this is the milk jug. I am adding that speckled egg, again repeating the color that's in my background. And I'm going to do a little bit of pouncing. So this is water technique number three. It's an oldie but a goodie. I'm going to smush some of that salvage patina onto my glass mat. This is Distress Oxide and I'm going to spritz it with water. Now I have a piece of cellophane. As I said, this is an oldie but goodie technique, and I'm going to add texture to this watering can. Instead of using a brown or maybe a rust to give it that weathered look, I'm going to give it that patina, thus the savage salvage patina, and I am just going to pounce it onto my can, making sure that uh, it dries really well before I add this 
twine to the neck of it. So I thought that the twine would give it just a little bit more texture and interest. You know I love my texture. I wrap it around about four times. I'll trim it off and then I'll use some scotch tape to hold that in place. And I think that uh, giving it that aged look with the pouncing from the saran wrap really does uh, add to the charm of this card. Everything in this card is going to be very soft, very subtle. Uh, in fact, when I do my stamping, I d stamp a sentiment from my stash that says, fresh picked, I believe, and I used frayed burlap for that so that it uh, went with that twine that I used. I used a rectangle from my stash. This is a rectangle with a rounded edge. I inked it up with some abandoned coral and I'm ad adhering it to my A2 size top folding card base so that my finished card is going to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I've added foam tape to the back of our ink blended and stamped layer. You can see that I did cut it from a smaller rounded rectangle and this is going to uh, be where we house our flora bouquet. For the milk jug I added some eighth inch foam tape around the outer edges of the milk can. I want to make sure that my stems and leaves are going to fit inside of there so I needed to make sure that I had plenty of space for that and we are going to start tucking our flowers in. Now I used two of the same leaves. I'm adding one to the left and one to the right side. And then there is one set of leaves that are um, two leaves together, but it's one die cut. So I did snip that apart and that's going to allow me just to tuck and create a bouquet. Uh, you'll see that I used some of the tulips that were more on the pinker side and then I used some of the ones that were on the softer peachy side. For those softer peachy ones I did share um, that those are the ones that I went to the glass mat instead of adding the ink direct to paper. I'm making sure that I'm adding the glue to the bottom of my stems and then I'm adding my flowers to the tops but I'm keeping that movement with that bouquet by not adhering the tulips directly to that ink blended panel. So I'm going to just kind of fluff those up and let those be a little bit loose and I'm just trying to fill in trying to balance out um, this bouquet. I don't know about you, but I am not really good at arranging real flowers. I feel like I'm much better at arranging um, faux flowers on my cards than I am creating flower arrangements at home. I just cannot find that balance. I really envy those that are really good at creating those beautiful bouquets. And I love fresh flowers, but I'm just not very good at mixing a whole bunch of different flowers together. Let me know down below if that's something that you're good at. I'd be interested in hearing how many of you um, are successful with fresh flower bouquets. I did want to mention that I am giving away the tulips. So in order to win the spring tulips, you must have a US mailing address. We will not be mailing outside of the United States, unfortunately. If you do, then all you need to do is be a subscriber, like the video, and leave a comment. And then in my next video, I will announce the winner of these spring tulips, which are absolutely gorgeous. So this is a great win if you are the winner next week. So here is the sentiment. I just used a really small die that I had in my stash. And as I mentioned, I stamped fresh picked using frayed burlap. And once I attach that, that will complete my card for today. I'll show you the movement uh, so you can see underneath how those flowers uh, look from the top. I'll show you another close up. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me today.